Choice architecture is about really creating the environment that gives you a good flow that's supporting your well-being. Yes. Because any any setup in the environment is already a choice architecture, whether it's a good one or bad one. It's just that we need to be mindful that anything, you know, if I have some healthy snacks here, I'm going to eat it. If I have some unhealthy snacks here, I might also end up eating it. That they are triggering our decisions. That seventy percent of our decisions are very much guided by autopiloting. It's not too mm-hmm. reflective, and that we need to be responsible in in being um, mindful of that influence. Yeah. yeah. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We're on site at the beautiful Transformative Technology Conference for our second partnership with them. We're now going to be speaking with Dr. Ting Zhang. Hi, Ting. Perfect pronunciation. Thank you for coming on our program. <laughs> Honored to be here. Yeah, and the perfect outfit for the program as well. I love it. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Colors. 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 Right. Flowers. That's right. Nature. That's right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, okay. always. Yeah, I have the leaves. You have the flowers. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm so pumped for this. Before we get into all of your stuff that you're doing, let's talk about, are we really all one? Right. We're two people here. So t- tell me what you mean by all one. That's your job to tell, <laughs> to tell us what my what? question means to you. <laughs> what, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? I'm curious to hear about yours first. My answer is yes. Okay. Why? Um, so my answer is no. Why? Your why first. We all come from the same source. We all have two sides of things. but it all comes from the same source. Having two sides doesn't mean that we have to necessarily be one. Okay. Um, can we move to this next topic? <laughs> I like where you were going with this though. Why do you bring up having two sides to the same thing? It's interesting. So, um, For a long time, we have been very curious about why people resist behavioral change. And I think uh, one uh, key barrier is um, failure. So when we um, acknowledge that we want to change, we also acknowledge that we are not yet perfect. Um, and, And that's really hard, right? So the... I think the two sides of things allow us to be always a bit more open to, um, you know, failure also means that you can learn, you can grow. So it's not just one way to look at it. There's always these two ways. And and I think human flourishing is about growth. Uh, It's not about where you start with. It's about um, how you you can grow over time. And it's important that we are open to different perspectives. I mean, impossible, I would love to say, you know, multiple perspectives. Um, but, but at least starting with two is, is great because it balances. So. Very cl- classic yin and yang. Very uh, tough because you're right. You, we start off with wanting to think this is absolutely perfect this is the absolute Tao. this is exactly where it's supposed to be yeah. yet we also want to say that we're flowering we're in the process of blossoming there's always room for improvement we're always growing this is the point of creation is the process of evolution yeah and also um in the chinese saying um you have to be when you are really in the position of peaking uh, up you have to be mindful that that's not gonna uh, last for long or that's not the only side of the story, right? And then when you are in the, at the bottom, when you feel like you know it's almost the end of the world, you understand that there's also the upside yeah. for that 
for that journey. So I I think that that sort of you know、um, being aware of the counterfactual and also the other side and being aware of the the dynamic.、Um, yeah, it's great. Now. Have you had feelings of deep, profound interconnectedness, or ego loss, or unconditional love, or deep presence? Tell us about your experiences with that. There was、um, this moment in life where it, it really changed my perspectives.、Um, when I was in Kenya, I was visiting the slum. Um, and of course, you know by by appearance, you can notice the colors difference and all that. And but I felt home in Africa, which was really weird. And there was this little kid, so I I flew in from Amsterdam. I had these Dutch cookies, and I was, you know, of course,、um, walking around and feeling really sad for how terrible their situation is without you know access to clean water. Everything is dirty. They are in poverty, and I was just sharing my little cookies with with the little kids,、um, and everybody was happy. But there are two things that shocked me.、Um, one is everybody didn't want to take a second bite. They would share after they take the first bite. I only had like two. I wasn't prepared, so it was like really like just two small cookies up. Wow, what a protocol! So、and、so as soon as you take the first bite, you pass. They、it. they try to bring the other kids. They try to share. Then there was this little kid who rejected my cookie because he didn't have time. He was carrying. He was like five year old. He was carrying a water, just taller than his knees. Okay, he had to take a break every ten steps because it was too heavy, and he looked at me and he smiled, and then he picked up his water and he walked on. He didn't take the cookie, and at that moment, I I don't know. I was I was I was touched by, you know how often、um, I felt I was having a hard time <laughs> sometimes. Like、you were like, oh gosh, this is hard, this is tough. But、um, knowing how privileged I was, I mean, being able to see the contrast and and being able to say, okay, you know, I was born so lucky, and they were born unlucky. But yet, you know, they persisted, and they were still so optimistic about life.、Um, so, or maybe people in metropolises are born unlucky, and people born in wilderness are born lucky. The, yeah, depending I, on how you view it. Right. So. Yes. So there's、um, wealth, not just in money, and there's lots of other dimensions to wealth.、Um, This is a very interesting story. When were you in Kenya? This was、uh, two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and th- this is this is also very interesting because it gives you、um, that same thing that you're talking about these like multiple perspectives on given situations.、Mm-hmm. It's like trying to get behind the eyes of someone that's trying to like carry water probably to their family,、mm-hmm. um, or someone that is、uh, was born with this idea that、uh, you take a bite and then you pass it. I can't be happy if you're not happy. So why、mm-hmm. would I ever take this cookie and try and? Then sell you half of it, <laughs> or、yeah. whatever the other philosophies are, or like all、oh, then where indigenous tribes still go, and whoever, whichever tribe、um, comes back with,、uh, or whichever family comes back with the hunt, shares it with the rest of the, the tribe rather than tries to.、Um, the questions always asked: Well, why don't you go and and st- and store the meat and preserve it and in, instead, or the or the the. The, what you've what you've gathered,、yeah. um, well, because、uh, the best place to store it is actually in your stomach, in my friend's stomach. Yeah. So if if you come back to the question, are we one? I think I felt they're one there, but the sad thing is, the world of the poor, the world of the rich, in whatever dimensions, right? In health, in wealth, in spiritual,、um, it's 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 in some way. Not one at the moment. Yes, we are divided,、yeah. and the question is why and how can we bridge them together? Yes.、Um, so I ended up, you know,、um, doing a lot of behavioral interventions on them because I felt deep inside us maybe we felt they are different, but they are so much the same. And when I brought a board game that was supposed to Help them、uh, overcome myopic, you know, decision-making tendency. 
the first time when they played it, they've never played a game in their life. It's not like us, you know, we play games all the time, we train ourselves, you know, we all kinds of supportive materials. They sucked at it. Like they couldn't do strategic thinking. They couldn't think multiple steps ahead of time. They couldn't even strategize within one round, you know, let alone, you know, a few rounds ahead of time. But then the second time when they came back, I was shocked. They were strategizing like crazy. Yeah. They were they were growing like, you know, and, and when we looked at them and when we wanted to help, I think a lot of time we help out of warm glow, thinking that we, you know, out of um, charitable feeling, out of empathy. But really, I think we need to help them out of respect, out of uh, respect of the potential human potential Creativity, in them and yeah, sort of yeah. more like invest in like it's wasted that's this person could could become obama this person could become you know somebody wonderful um doing a lot of amazing things for the world and we're just not making the best use of it at the moment and it's the cheapest way to invest you know um because even just a little bit of help there they could they could yeah they could get out of poverty and just take a very different path so i'm very interested in even um what as we're talking about this what is the most upstream uh root of the big issue that you also hinted at earlier where this there's this disconnect between what's happening in the metropolises and what happened uh, indigenously with and i and i do think that it, it's interconnectedness i'm curious to hear if you think it is is it is interconnectedness is um, these feelings uh, of unity of oneness are they what's missing uh, in our metropolises are they the thing the 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 idea that we are that there is separation is that the most upstream issue of our world today if we look at well-being um, I think if we look at the top 10 causes of death right if of developed countries versus developing countries you see chronic illnesses, right? heart attack, um, cancer. Um, and a lot of these can be prevented um, and, and cured with better lifestyle, lifestyle change. And if you look at lifestyle, one key factor is stress. And if you look at stress, one key um, remedy actually is social connectedness. Uh, so loneliness is terrible for um, for stress, um, but being ha being able to have a social group, social support, it's wonderful. Um, and if you look at loneliness, like how big is the problem? If you look at suicidal rates, what's the uh, you know what's the trend? Um, I do think that we have a fundamental problem of um, coming back to um, the 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 fundamental human need. Um, if you think about what makes you happy, um, a lot of times, even having a good social connection, a social relationship, being able to have a good love relationship can make you so happy. Yeah. But if you have a fight with your, with your colleague at work, it can make you want to quit your job. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and, and all the time, like when we're stressed about, oh, not meeting deadline, it's because we feel bad not meeting the expectations of other people. Yeah. We're intrinsically social. We're, we're so... Yeah, yeah. We're such as human species. Uh, human species is a social uh, species. So, so I do think that it's it's something that can give us a lot of um, satisfactions, life satisfactions, where we might overlook how important, we might underestimate how important it is. Yes, yes. You were hinting at this a little bit ago. We can dive deep into this this is fascinating you used this word um choice architecture with me earlier mm -hmm. you were talking about um myopic thinking so extremely yeah. nearsighted um i just want instant gratification or um rather than maybe long-term uh goal-oriented thinking, strategic chess style, 12 moves down the line thinking. Yeah. Um, this is fascinating field to many people. We talk about this on the show quite often. What are you uniquely blueprinted for? What is the gift that you can bring to the world? How do you strategically bring that gift to the world? Right. But at the same time, aren't isn't there like just just being what about just being like if 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 it is just that I don't like the you know, maybe it is just 
maybe it is I don't want to learn more about your choice architecture because I just want to just be in the middle of nature in the mm -hmm. middle of my tribe out in the wilderness or whatever it be mm -hmm. so choice architecture works for maybe extremely like goal oriented trying to bring <laughs> something into the world um but to teach at least that that exists could yeah. be like the point is like hey this exists if you're interested but at the same time maybe people that have super goal oriented need to learn how to just chill the fuck out and be instead <laughs> you know how do you feel about that First of all, what makes you want to be just in the uh, middle of the nature? Why does that count as being and not like being next to you, being among other people? Is that not being? You're, you're right that it is also being, but this style of being has agenda and the other style of being has no agenda. Okay. So... People don't drink enough. Water is essential for life. So we have some agenda uh, about needing to drink water to live. Of course, you can say, well, let, let, let it be. I'll, I'll just not drink enough water. I can let it be. But it's also not terrible if we drink enough water and actually can feel more when we're being ourselves. We have enough brain power to be mindful, be more mindful. When we rest well, when we sleep well, we're so much re more relaxed. And and yes, there's an agent that to be to sleep better. But but I think it's not incompatible, right, with the concept of the being. So I think choice architecture a lot of time is actually about taking away some of the decisions that are really not that fundamental for you to reflect on to spend a lot of energies uh, on because it's like um, Google Calendar help you um, know when you are up for certain appointments we can memorize it ourselves but we don't need to right and then it frees up your cognitive capacity to really think about meaning of life to really sure. be sure sure right so so I it's not necessarily um, bad. For uh, of course. And also there's, the again, this kind of the same first principle of upstream question around why even use um, that in the first place regarding um, just needing uh, planning whatsoever, having no agenda whatsoever, just being in the state of constant interconnectedness with the experience of consciousness. Yeah. Um, I, I, I find this conversation to be really interesting, but it's also um, I, I find what you're doing to be extremely important because you're showing people that if you have something that you feel like is a gift that you want to bring to the world, if you are uniquely blueprinted to some to bring even some sort of a butterfly effect style change around the flowering of consciousness over time, then having uh, 12 moves ahead of time framing or offsetting some of your cognition to Google Calendar, Evernote, blah, 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 mm -hmm. is actually extremely useful for um, your productivity and for your ability to bring that gift forward yeah and let me also yes. may, maybe mention that um we we do like to increase the flow moments of human beings because that's when they feel really well right immersive being immersive in 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 life um and choice architecture is about really creating the environment that give you a good flow that's supporting your well-being yes because any any setup in the environment is already a choice architecture whether it's a good one or bad one it's just that we need to be mindful that anything you know if i have some healthy snacks here i'm gonna eat it if i have some unhealthy snacks here i might also end up eating it that they are triggering our decisions that 70 percent of our decisions are very much guided by autopiloting it's not mm -hmm. too reflective and that we need to be responsible in in being um, mindful of that influence, yeah, yeah, um, and 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 in order to create sort of the the better uh, human experiences. What what are the most important things, for example, for when um, I do want to bring something that I'm uniquely blueprinted to bring to the world or a gift that I want to bring to the world? What are the things that you're seeing and studying in um, choice architecture? This is at the Center for Advanced Hindsight. 
Yes. At Duke. Right. What are you guys finding as like these most first principled things? Um, that's a great question. Um, I think creativity, um, getting people to get into a creative mode is something that, of course, is it's everybody would be unique in those moments. So you can try to create, you can, for example, uh, blocking time. So we're starting to make Friday a non-work, you know, day. I mean, yeah. it's it's not yeah, that yeah. unique because everybody's not doing it, right? But it's, No it cell is, phone Sunday, et yeah. cetera. Yeah, it yeah. is in itself still a choice architecture. Um, okay. In a sense okay. of like, it blocks the time for you to connect or it blocks yeah, the time yeah, for yeah. you to go for your deep work yeah, or okay, to okay. not worry about the the typical kind of work. Okay. So, okay. yeah. So give us more of these. These are very cool. Um, what else? Um, oh, we have the, maybe I can. I can yeah, Sh yeah, we show us. Conversation deck. We love these. Yeah, <laughs> we love, we love demos on the show. I love these. Um, okay, all right. You know, what personal trait do you have that annoys your coworkers? Okay, friends? wait, we got to show these. Hold on, let's, let's, yeah. let's, okay, let's see these. Okay, hold on. All right, all right. Oh, conversational decks. Oh, all yeah, right. So no small talk. Right? No, I love that rule. No small talk. Okay, everyone, ready? <laughs> and okay. So, what does that one say? What are you embarrassed about? So that's an interesting question. What what else do we have here? Ooh, this is a good one. What personality trait are you most proud of? Okay. Ooh. What do you value most in friendship? Interesting. So, you, okay, even go questions ahead. Like, yeah, take us down know, these. Yeah, why? Who do you like more, your mom or your dad? Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So, right, it's, 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 and it's hard. Or, like, what's the most touching gift, touching or inspiring gift that you've ever given to someone? Oh, I love this. Yeah. Right. This is so and, good. And yeah. some of the questions, like, even for my uh, best friend or husband, I actually didn't know the answer, if I have to guess. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so I think it's it's kind of um, the the a new line of products, feature or products or um, architectural design, space design that would trigger these all of these good um, habits and good rituals that we can have to get to know each other more, to be more in a moment, uh, to be more productive, to be more creative, to be anything that is less robotic. Yeah, interesting. So can, um, can we use uh, interventions like conversation decks to break through small talk, get to the depths of the psyche, um, get to these questions that we maybe have never even uh, thought of answering ourselves. So like interventions like these are actually really paramount for us trying to, um, to do things like uh, better understand uh, who we really are at the depths of the psyche and also try and, um, and uh, guide ourselves more towards what uh, we can potentially be uniquely gifted for that we didn't even know was in our blueprint. Right. Uh, what yeah. What are the other uh, interventions? These are these are great. So so far we have conversation decks. Yeah. We have what was the first one as well that you mentioned? Oh, the the um, no 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 typical work Friday that we now have. Yeah, the no uh, work Fridays. Yes, yeah. Yes. Um. I recently picked up a ritual with my mom to share the three things that I'm most excited about for my day, like to just something that brought me sort of deep meaning and joy. Um, and I was surprised to find out, you know, to learn about hers since I, I have lived abroad for 20 years now. So we have, you know, with my mom, we, we would call, you know, once a week, but I don't get to experience her life, you know, on a daily basis. And also sharing something just positive right yeah. and, and it and every time when i reflect on my day i realize the kind of things i'd like to share with her and write about it i'm joyful about it's actually not those that i would guess that would be the one on top of my mind that are too much work related or right like there are moments where i'm connected with another person or even a stranger where it's like 
Oh, that was actually a very wonderful moment.、Uh, something worth memorizing and、um, remembering, and and same for my mom. So I think even just、yeah. with the now we have been doing it for a week. We just recently started.、Um, I I felt so much、uh, deeper connected with her.、Um, What a beautiful ritual! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so then.、Um, I guess a good amount of what you're doing is figuring out how to design.、Um, do you guys crowdsource these ideas? Do you like have、that's、people a, submit their rituals and you guys analyze them to see how much it helps with well-being? And that's a brilliant idea. I do think that that would be a really great idea to crowdsource.、Um, we haven't done that, and、um, if you have a way to help us to.、Uh, Crossroads. That we would love to get suggestions. That's why we do this show. We play the, <laughs> we play these games of tennis. We come up with good ideas, and then we tell everyone that's watching. Hey, so we、yeah. have a link in the bio below. You guys can submit <laughs> submit yes, your please, ritual ideas. Please, please.、Um, there was、uh, one that was uh, uh, shared with my by my friend Mickey,、uh, who was the founder of、uh, Maya Design,、uh, who tried this in their、uh, workplace that to ask everybody. To bring something a little bit personal to workplace, and they would misplace it. You know,、oh、they would、gosh. randomly drop it in like different、That's、people's、funny. desks, and you have to find like you have to yeah. Like you find bring it you back. You find like to toilet paper、order. in the middle of the hallway or something. <laughs> and, and like who or, does this belong to? Who does this belong? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You find、so、like a、uh, like- you find like a little like a like a little. Toy of some sort, or a little item of some sort from like a given culture in the middle of somewhere it's not supposed to be, and like、yeah. in the kitchen, in the sink, or something, and you have to like find and know who it could be at the workplace that actually owns that item. Yes, that's a cool game. Yeah, I love that game because、yeah. then you have to get to know people better. Yes.、Um, But it, it, would, it should also be that everybody has to go and at least find an item, not like one person's going and like playing the game and everyone else、no. is just. You, you actually get an、to. item. Everybody gets an item on their desk, and this item doesn't belong to them. Oh, it, it, oh, it's on their desk. Yes. Oh, I thought it was like you can go place it anywhere in the workplace, and then <laughs> wherever you find a random item.、Yeah. Okay. No, this was. Oh, it's on their more, desk. Yeah, yeah.、So、it's more controlled in that sense. More controlled. Oh, so、yes. then everybody has to participate. I、right. like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. Right. Okay, I like that one.、Uh-huh. Do you have any in your own life? Um, let's think. I mean, some of the. F- I mean, some of the first things that come up for me、um, are just rituals of giving what is. Available when people come in as like guests into the home for the shows. Just always wanting to, you know, to be hospitable in some way and just give whatever you know. There's this culture around the world that I forgot which one it was that if someone points at something when they're visiting and says, "Oh, that's very beautiful," they just give it to them right away.、Mm-hmm. Um, So I guess my, my answer is I would need to spend more time analyzing myself. This is hard to try and compress my life into something that、um, I have some sort of a ritual like what you were describing. But、um, there are likely some that I could that I could pull, but、uh, hard to do so right now. What is something that you do that help you feel more present? Just the deep depths into the interconnectedness of all, and that usually just comes from a meditation. Yeah, it's a very contemplative.、Um, it's very meditative. It's, but it's also deeply scientific. It's not just spiritual. To me, it's marrying the two sides of the same coin. So, I constantly think about the interconnectedness of everything on a scientific level as I do on a spiritual level. So, and when I. You know, think and feel and experience that feeling. That to me is, I guess. Thanks for bringing that up. That's probably my best ritual, but it's such a personalized one. There's、mm-hmm. other people that I practice this ritual with, like the co-producer of our show, Ori.、Um, he's someone that I practice this ritual with on just like a, sometimes we'll just、um, be s- so meditative. Eat- 
together mm. and he's just so meditative he himself that i get triggered into the interconnected state just by mm -hmm. um being around him and stuff like right. that so the more that someone in a sense is unconditional lovey and presenty mm -hmm. and etc the more you get vortexed into that yeah. yourself but when you're such a future builder mm -hmm. that's what I'm so ops and architecturally oriented mm -hmm. that um, I spend a lot of my time actually building that future world. Um, and that's a hard in thing a, to in figure out. In a physical world, architecture-wise? Yeah, exactly. Like, um, like, like, I guess I, I don't necessarily think that the future can be built by just meditative feeling. And right. yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, but so some example, people counter that point and they do say that you can actually just be super present and they'll build it. And I'm like, I'm still trying to figure that out. But go ahead. Yes, right. you were saying. Yes. So, so let's let's think about the workplace. Lots of people spend, you know, eight hours, let's say, at the workplace, right? That's that's a lot after, after taking out like sleep hours and all of the necessary, you know, uh, things that you have yeah. to do with your time. Um, what's... Like, what's the best way to design the office? Like, forget about how they are designed now. How would you design the workplace in a different way that you would promote the m most aggregate well-being of everybody in there? Right? Yeah, yeah. I love this question. We actually just talked about it on an episode with Brandon just a little bit ago on the show earlier today where yeah. we gave the example of if the... Th if we were architecting our, our built environments with the first principle of interconnectedness, yeah. there would be much more natural light, there'd be much more plants, animals. It would be like basically if you took like com computational modernity and mm -hmm. brought it into the middle of forests and beaches mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. That's what we came right. up with, yeah. And and as a as a as a scientist, I, I would start with um, diagnosis of uh, what's the biggest contributing factors to people's well-being during the day and i would actually say taking a daily nap could be very helpful for their mood more than having plants around now plants might be necessary but if you would measure the impact of like how much does it how much do you feel um satisfied about life and if i would compare the two interventions, having 10 plants around him or getting him to take a daily nap. Yeah. I would bet on the daily nap in that particular outcome, Yeah. right? Life satisfaction or mood yeah, or yeah, even health outcomes. Yeah, interesting. Now, how do you get people to take a daily nap? We have some tech companies who are actually endorsing these ideas, but did they approach in a scientific way of, um, like in order to make 80% of their employees acquire a napping habit what do you need to do how do you need to design your space how do you de need to design the the napping facilities so that they actually do that it's not a simple question it's not about just having some napping rooms around because people might not do it we always know the behavioral uptake is more than just you know offering the product right what about retention maybe they try it the first few days and then they drop out yeah yeah what about the image, social image, social norms? Do you need to intervene something, right? Um, so that um, becomes um, the, the two sides of these. Um, this, this, uh, yeah, actually, it full circles us to what we were very initially talking about, which yeah. is when you um, are given this um, a super goal-oriented uh, behaviors versus the just take a nap let your let your body like yeah. just relax during yeah. that i think yeah. the two sides is that the internal in, in internal um world and then the external world right it's the two yeah. the two and they both need to come together to support yes these behavior. Exactly. Exactly. and the external yeah. world i think can be more scientifically designed almost like um the environment as medicines for for supporting you like you yeah, know yeah, that it's a good yeah. idea to take a nap but you need or you know that you know having more vitamin or whatever is help but you still need to take that like they need to be available for you so another quick example is um a work break like in between your you know dense meetings etc break is amazing for productivity yeah. now how do you make sure that people 
take that five minutes break with the most relaxation yes. that they need. It's not easy to be like just sitting around having seeing all of your colleagues. Now with the open space concept, yeah. you don't have any privacy. <laughs> you don't. You can't just like you know shut down for five minutes, right? Mm. So we might end up then just checking social media. So one thing that we were um, brainstorming with our architects in China is, can you create an enclosed pathway to the toilet because you take you know, you take toilet break and they happen to coincide with your work break. Mm -hmm. So if I make it enclosed, if I play meditative music in this enclosed yeah, yeah, channel, yeah. right, I can decorate it with all the green you want. Yeah. And nowadays, the, you know, even green color sometimes can uh, substitute, like plant. I mean, it, you cannot replace plants. Mm -hmm. Ideally, just plants, but if, if you want a low cost version, right? Um, uh, and you let them walk back from the toilet as if they walk back from a forest walk. Try to simulate yeah, that. Stuff like that. Stuff like that. It's not, it's, it's fully compatible with, you know, your, then you have the um, multiplier effect. So you have the environment, yeah. you have the intention. Of course, you still need to work on the self-awareness. It's, it's crucial. But, yeah. but then it's yeah. two, two, two parts of the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, could this is given the um, the limitations that we have today um, to be able to make the interventions uh, right now? Um, that was a, that was a good example. Um, okay, and then I, I must ask you this because you know we just came back from doing interviews in China. We love the philosophies of the East. Um, the philosophies of the West are somewhat different. Mm -hmm. The two sides of the same coin marrying is very important. Um, how do you feel about um, how to best collaborate geopolitically? Between China and, and the US? US? Yeah. Ha, huh, that's so interesting. I think the world, you know, it's so difficult. It's so easy to like someone who thinks like you. It's just not easy to like someone who disagree with you, right? By nature. Like we are all in group oriented. In some sense we're we're still having our tribal instinct. So there's the effect called homophily effect. If mm -hmm. I find out that you were born on the same day, uh, or there's certain, you know, similarities, all of a sudden I trust you more. Like yeah. um it turns out there's an experiment if you tell them like, hey, you two actually share, you know, the same fingerprint and it's rare, it's not common. I'm much more likely to help you out with like uh, a favor that you ask yeah. afterwards, right? So, um, but the the beauty of uh, modernity is about going beyond this tribal instinct yeah. of liking your in group, and it's about having that universal love. Um, I mean, the economy of impersonal exchange and having trust with all of these strangers. I mean, it makes all of these wonderful, beautiful things happen and make the entire human species as one, as you, as you put it. So how can we uh, learn from, I think, you know, how can we marry two different cultures? I think if we would practice, if we would find out some good tricks to even get ourselves to like people with different opinions, people who are not like us, I think we'll be getting closer to think about cultural collaborations. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, that was a great way to put it. Um, do you think that humanity is a biological bootloader for digital super intelligence? <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's such an amazing world that we live in now with all of the technologies making so many things possible um i was i cannot help thinking about this metaphor about the hammer and the nails um i think for one i think humans are the one deciding what nail the hammer should be hammering on um and we need to have the intelligence to know what we want the wall to look like what 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 do we want to you know put on a wall and which nails to hammer um and instead of just sharpening our hammers um i think we have enough sharp hammers it's important as well but i think what we are lost losing sight of is some of these more fundamental questions and i think even some of the questions like meaning of life 
it's true that we cannot be accurate about it, but it doesn't mean that having an inaccurate, um, non-precise answer is not important for us to have an answer. And it doesn't mean the fact that it cannot be fully quantifiable, right? And, and I think there could be some indicators that can um, at least be proxies, good proxies of that. Um, it, it, being able to track um, progress towards those fundamental goals and it is crucial for us to be, mm-hmm. you know, keeping our um, either control or confidence above the um, digital world. So, um, yeah, so I think the emotional intelligence um, is um, yet to be, um, I think the we certainly can outsource our um, IQ, <laughs> uh, anything that is just about, you know, computation and the other kind of intelligence. We, we, we don't need to be mastering those, but we need to be mastering EQ. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in creation? Some of the most beautiful things tend to be also the most intangible. If you think about love, if you think about art, and the world do pay attention to and our attention do get drawn to quantifiable factors so I don't have a concrete um, definition um, but I do know they tend to be things that would that we can feel, you know, deep inside our hearts and that we cannot explain why we feel so in awe with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Ting, I feel so excited and lightened. Thank you so much for coming on our program. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Great you. pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, check out the links in the bio below. This is, again, the Center for Advanced Hindsight at Duke University. You can find that link in the bio below. Also, other links to Ting's work as well. Also, check out the links in the bio below to the Transformative Technology Conference. You can find all of those links in the bio below. You can check out the links in the bio below to our show as well. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the leaders, and your communities that you believe in. You can find our PayPal, Patreon, cryptocurrency link, as well as our Design Cool Merchant Get Paid. All those links are below. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.